everyone, this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pendant necklace with some crystals and chain combined together with the newest treasure bag, Pastel Passion Color Mix 1 and 2. Both of these components are in both colors. You can also get these on my website or you can use any pendant that you would like. This process will work. And we'll discuss that further in the next section. This is what this looks like. You can use either the flower or the heart, or like I've done, both. They turn out really pretty. You can see the back of it. Just really pretty little necklaces. And we're going to go ahead and look and see what it takes to make this particular project. Okay, for this project today, we are going to be using a couple of the components that are in the newest treasure bag. This treasure bag was the Pastel Passion, and in both bags, because it was two color mixes, you have the same components. You have this little heart with a butterfly in the middle and this little daisy. So you have two of each of these, and I do have more of these on the website if you would like to get some. I don't think they're sold out yet. So um, we're going to be using one or the other or both. I'm going to make a necklace with this one now. As you can see, I've made the necklace with the heart. It'd be the exact same process. I'm going to show you exactly how I did this and let's see if I can get it nice and neat. And here's the example with the heart. I'm going to make one with the daisy and what we're going to be using, <clears throat> adding to the treasure bag, I'm going to use some four millimeter bicones. So let me get this in camera here. And I'm going to be using some, I believe these are Swarovski. I also have some Prestige like this on the website and it's just as pretty. So you can get some of those if you want or just use what you have in your stash. And then we're going to be using some seed beads. So I have got an 8 and an 11 -0. These are galvanized permanent finish aluminum in the Toho line. So we'll be using those and then from the treasure bag, you have this oval cable chain that is platinum in color. We're going to be using two pieces cut exactly the same length of that. And I have cut mine, let's see, six inches long. I am making this necklace around 17 inches long simply because I want it to be at collarbone level so that this lays right at the base of my throat and this part. This will lay right at the base of my throat, collarbone level, and this will lay right beneath it. Then that length works out really well for this particular style, but of course you can make it longer or shorter depending upon the length of the chain you cut. Then from the treasure bag I'll be using this toggle clasp. Now you can use any clasping you want, that's perfectly fine. And then we are going to be using, I don't know, about six four millimeter jump rings. I just put a little pile out. And then we are going to be using two pieces of 24 gauge wire or 26 gauge. Mine isn't marked. I think it's a 24 gauge. It could be 26. Either will work just fine. And I've cut two pieces about three inches long. And then we will be using some... I have 10 pound nano fill and you can use six pound fire line or you can use eight pound nano fill. That'll be fine too. We're going to be using two needles. So I have two size 12 needles and then you're going to cut about two and a half feet of thread and you're going to put your needle on either side of the thread on both sides. So let me open this up so you can see. So I have put one needle on both sides. And just make sure after you thread both of your needles on that one piece of thread that you have drawn through on both sides of the needle or drawn through the needle on both sides the same amount of thread. That way you can make sure that both sides of your thread are equal. And you can center your piece better. So that's what we're going to be making. Now no, if you do not have the treasure bag, I do have some of these. However, you can use 
any pendant that you want with this, it'll work just fine. So get something out of your stash. The only thing you want to make sure of is that it has a loop that's flat against your bead mat, not one that's this way. If you have a bale or a jump ring on it, just take the bale or jump ring off and use the original loop. Now if the loop is up and down like this on your pendant, it won't work because of the design we're making. So just grab any pendant you want and let's go ahead and get started on this project. Okay, to start this project, we're going to make two little components like this. So I've made one, I'll show you how to make them. We'll have two of these and we'll have them ready so that when we put our necklace together, all we have to do is grab them. So I've got a piece of wire and it's probably about three and a half inches long. It's you know, it's about four inches long, which is a little excessive. You can cut it more like three inches long if you'd like. Then you're just going to put your plier on this about an inch down, just like this. So you have an inch of wire on this side. You're going to take that inch and you're going to push it over the back of your round nose pliers. Stay towards the front of your round nose pliers so you don't make a really big loop. And then your pliers are sideways like this or flat. You're then going to turn them up and down like this, vertical, and um, you're going to place it right in the bend you created when you pushed the wire over the top of the plier. Then you're going to take that shorter length of wire and you're going to push it over the top of the plier and then you're going to start to turn your hand flat again and draw that wire underneath the plier while holding the plier flat. Now you should have a little loop that looks like this. Then you're going to grab a pair of flat nose pliers, hold on to that loop, and then I'm going to switch hands just because I wrap better with my right hand. I am going to position this so that it is the same angle as my plier. And then I'm going to start to wrap that shorter length around the longer length and coil it like twice. Nice and tight, nice and neat around the plier or around the wire, not the plier. And then I'm going to get very close while I'm still holding it with my flush cutters and cut that down. While I'm still holding it, I'm going to grab my little crimp pliers and I'm just going to tuck down that excess piece of wire that sticks up after you cut it so that it's not pokey. See, did I get it? I think I did. Okay. Maybe not. All right, so once you have that tucked down, then you should have something that looks like this. Now you can see my loop is a little off center, so I'm just going to grab my round nose pliers and I'm just gonna kind of move it over so that it's centered now, just like that. Now I'm going to pick up an 8 seed bead and four of my bicone crystals onto this wire. The holes in the beads lately have just been difficult for me to see. So, give me a second. All right. Now, this is what I have. We're going to, again, make a loop on the other side. So, grab your round nose pliers towards the tip of your pliers so you don't make a huge loop. Make sure that you're tucked up tight against those beads and then push the excess length of wire over the back of your plier while you're holding your plier flat. And then turn the plier up and down into that band of wire and then bring the excess wire over the top of the plier. And then turn your hand so that it is now, the plier is now flat and bring that wire underneath so that you have a loop like this. Then grab your flat nose pliers, hold on to that loop, and I'm going to switch my hands. I'm going to position the excess piece of wire so that it is the same angle as my pliers, and then I'm going to begin to turn. And I'm just going to turn until it's the beads are nice and tight on the wire. 
and I'm just going to make probably about three turns. Because we have eightos and this is small wire, if one turn is a little bit more than the other side, the eightos should kind of fall over it and it doesn't really matter, just as long as your component's nice and neat and tight. Then I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to continue holding on to it and see if I can tuck this down. I think I got it. No, I did not. So, it's much easier if you can just hold on to it in the in the um, pliers, but I can't see it that well, so there. Now, I have a component, and you're going to make two just like that, and then set them aside. Then, we're going to start our necklace. So let me just rearrange a little bit and we will start the focal part of our necklace. Okay, so to start the focal area of the necklace, go ahead and grab one of your pendants. I'm using the little daisy and um, you have your needles on both sides of your thread. Just separate those needles, pick up the pendant on one needle. So I'm using my right hand needle and I'm just going to put my pendant on there. Then I'm going to put both of the needles together and I'm just going to draw this pendant down to the center of my thread, just like that. Then I'm keeping my needles together and I'm going to pick up an 8 seed bead and I'm just going to put an 8 on both of my needles and draw it down to the pendant. And then I'm going to do that again with a bicone keeping them together, draw it down, and then one more 8 seed bead. This kind of protects the edge, the thread against the edges of the crystal here to have the 8 on both sides. Then I'm going to separate my needles now and organize my flower here, my pendant, so that my threads are coming out on both sides and not twisted. There we go. Now, I'm going to take my right needle and I'm going to pick up two 11 seed beads onto the right side here. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the left needle. Now, I'm going to pick up the right needle again and I am going to pick up a crystal, an 11 o, and a crystal and an 11 o. Come here, crystal, and 11 o. Same thing on the other side. So I pick up my left needle and crystal 11 o, crystal 11 o, and drop it down. Okay, let me get in the camera a little bit better here and get you closer. Now we're going to pick up our right hand needle and pick up one bicone crystal. I'm going to slide it down to the thread here and then I'm going to pick up my left hand needle and I'm going to go into that crystal. So I am kind of just crisscrossing the threads in here. So I'll pick up my other needle again and I'll pull on both of them and draw this bicone down so that you have something that looks like this now. Now we're going to sew through this to reinforce it with both needles and we're going to sew through the whole thing and then exit again and then do the other needle. So I've got my right hand needle in my hand and I'm coming out of the crystal on top. This may loosen a little as I do this but I can tighten it. I'm going to go into this 11 0 and then down into all the beads on the right hand side of the pendant here. So I've gone through all of these on top and going through that 8 0, the bicone crystal, the 8 0, and then I'm going to push my needle through the loop of the pendant, just like this. And I'm just going to pull it through gently, holding on to my beads here so that everything stays together. 
and then I'm just going to go back up and go through the entire left hand side. So I'm going to go into the 80, the bicone, the 80 in the center, and then all the beads on the left hand side of our unit here. Just like this. If you can't get them all at once, then just exit and then go back in where you left off. Now that I'm coming out of this 11-0 on the left hand side, I can go up through the center and I again have both of my threads on either side of the unit. Now I'm going to pick up my left hand thread and I'm going to do the same thing. On the left hand side I'm going to start with all the beads on the upper part of the unit. And then I'm going to go down into the centered beads, the 8 crystal, 8 and loop of the pendant. I'm going to pull this through. I'm going to make sure my right hand thread is out of the way and I'm going to go back up and this time once I go through the centered beads I am then going to go through all the right hand beads. So I'm having an issue so I'm just going to exit the centered beads. I've got the 8 crystal 8 I'm going to exit and then I'm going to go into these 11 O's and all the beads on the upper part of the unit here. Now you can see I'm coming through all of those beads and then I'm going to go through the centered crystal here. And again straighten out my unit and now it's reinforced <clears throat> and I'm going to work on one side of the necklace and then we will do the other side off camera. So I'm going to pick up my right hand needle I'm coming out of the centered crystal. I'm going to go into this little 11 O seed bead right here. And I am going to pick up on my right hand needle a series of crystals and 11 O's. So I'm going to pick up crystal 11 O, crystal 11 O, crystal 11 O and a crystal. So you want four crystals, three 11 O's between them, just like this. Drop this down, go into the opposite side of the 11 O seed bead you're coming out of, and just that 11 O, just like that, pull this around. Now we have to sew through this so that we can secure it. So we're just going to, we're coming out of that little connecting 11 O, we're just going to start sewing up through the beads. So I've gone through crystal 11 0 crystal, then I'm going to go through this little 11 0 by itself because I want it to stay positioned there. And then I'll go down the three beads on this side and back into my 11 0. Now we have to sew up to this 11 0 for our next step. So we're going to go through the crystal 11 0 crystal on this side of the unit right here. And then we are going to go up through this 11 0 here. This is what it should look like so far. And you're going to pick up 11 0 and then an 8 0 and then an 11 0. And we're going to go into the opposite side of the 11 0 we're coming out of pull this down and we're going to sew back through this one more time to secure it but you don't want to do it too many times because we're going to put a jump ring through this 80 so don't fill it up with thread especially if you're using a larger thread than I am so we're just going to go through it one time all of the beads so I've gone through that 11 0 this 80 this 11 0 and then I'll go back into the 11 0 between the crystals here Come here. Make sure it's nice and tight and looks good. Then we're going to sew through these three beads on this side here. We're going to come down into this 11 0 And right here between this 11 0 and this crystal, we're going to tie a knot. So I'm just going to bring my needle underneath. I'm going to arrange the loop that is forming so that it's between those beads and then I'm going to go through the loop 
and pull a knot down on my piece here on the little thread between those beads just like that now I am going to just get away from my knot so I'm going to go back up through these three beads here come on right here and I'm just gonna cut that off so let's see if I have a zapper here so I want this very close to my crystal so I'm just gonna kinda of pull on that and cut that off very close just like that now you're going to do the exact same thing on the other side now you just have one thread so you're going to take that needle and you're going to put it through the 11 seed bead on the left hand side of your unit here so let's see did I just mess up I did <laughs> sorry let me back out here because um, I believe that I'm in the wrong position so I'm coming out of this crystal right here I accidentally went down to this 11 we want to be in the 11 right next to where you're coming out of so just go into that 11 pull that down and now you can make the exact same unit like you did here on this side Make sure that you make your little unit on top, your little pico here, or your right angle weave unit, and then tie off your thread, at just like I just showed you, and we will be right back. Okay, so now you can see I have made my unit on this side, and it looks really cute. It just makes this really cute V shape. Now we are going to connect one side of the back of the necklace and then off camera we'll do the other. So you're going to need some jump rings. I've got a four millimeter jump ring. Now note on the jump rings, you have to make sure that they are a fairly thin jump ring. They don't have to be flimsy, but they need to be a smaller gauge. I would say this is about, I don't know, maybe a 22 gauge and you want to make sure they're thin like that because they need to be able to fit through this 8 seed bead so um, this is about a four millimeter in diameter you can use a six also if you need to and I have found the opening on it right here I have placed a player on one side of that opening I'm going to place another player on the other side of the opening and I'm just going to crank it open and I'm going to crank it open pretty wide like this then I'm going to grab the edge of it and I'm going to grab my 8 seed bead and I'm just going to place it through my 8 seed bead like this then I'm going to grab my component, one of my components I made. You should have two of these. Drop that on that jump ring and then grab your jump ring again with two pliers and close it. So just bring it back, twisting it just like you twisted it open. Just do it opposite and close it. And this is what you have. Let me back off just a little bit here. Now we're going to connect one of the lengths of chain that we cut. Now I cut six inches and um, I am going to grab a jump ring again and open it just like I just showed you. Placing a plier on either side of the opening, crank it open, and then put it on the component loop and then drop the end of my chain on there and then close the jump ring just like that now I'm going to grab a half of my toggle here and I'm going to open another jump ring and put it on the end of the chain and then drop my toggle clasp on it and then close it 
and that's all there is to that. So you're going to do the other side exactly the same way. Get your other little component, connect it, connect your chain, connect the other half of your toggle, and your necklace will be done. This is a really quick moving, really pretty little project. So like I said, you can accomplish it with any uh, pendant you have. So let's go ahead and finish it up and take a peek at what it looks like. Okay, so here they are. This is what it looks like with the heart. This is what it looks like with the flower. I'm going to put this against my skin so you can see how pretty the focal area is. It turned out really nice. You have a nice back. Really pretty. Then we'll look at this one. Just really cute. I put them on and the length I made on me hangs right at the base of my throat. Um, collarbone length basically. And it's just really, really pretty. Hangs nicely. It's nice bit of sparkle. Can be casual. Can be dressy. Doesn't matter. And I hope you like them. And if you do, go ahead and try them. Because you never know until you do. And... Um, thank you for watching this tutorial. I appreciate it very much. If you feel so inclined, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and perhaps a thumbs up. It truly does help my channel, and I would like to continue making pieces of jewelry with you. So, that's it for today. Bye-bye.